Radio. And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. What's up, YouTube? Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, and this is a new one. It looks like Ushan has decided to step into the DMR market. So I have a couple videos on the Titera TYT MD380 and 390s. Well, it's not going to be too long before Bofeng and other ones join into the DMR market. And apparently, Ushan, this is their first DMR handheld, the KG D901 DMR two-way. This is a UHF model. 400 through 470, although I see they have other models for VHF uh, uh, VHF frequencies, but for this one it is uh, UHF. And this is available at radiodity.com, R-A-D-I-O-D-D-I-T-Y.com. The link is in the description. And as far as the price, it's uh, a little bit uh, more than the MD380, a little bit less than the MD390. So it's still in the same price range if you want to get started in DMR, substantially lower than something like a Connect Systems. Um, and check out Radiotity. They actually have a, a bunch of sales. You know, they'll have flash sales on their website, which uh, this thing may go on sale for a 24 hour period. You got to watch. They also have an app for your phone where you can uh, check out a whole bunch of stuff on their store. So, very good store. I, I keep plugging away for them. They're great. Um, so looking at this quickly, what I'll do is I'll just, I mean, the unboxing is nothing too fancy, so I'll just show you. It does come with the stuff you would expect, the uh, instruction manual, the radio with the battery underneath, an antenna, UHF antenna, charger, power cord, and belt clip. This charger is not going to be, uh, this may be compatible with the other Ushan radios. Um, I don't know if, if it's the same as the UV8D or 9D charger, um, but... Uh, the wall adapter here is the same. And uh, it, it doesn't come, well, this one didn't come with the programming cable. However, Ushan has uh, said, and it does work, I've tried it, that the Bofeng, regular Bofeng programming cable does work with it, with the software and cable. So it's got the same, you know, programming pins as it does on a, a regular Ushan programming cable. So with TYT using their own, the Ushan uses the standard Bofeng cable for software programming. That is pretty cool. Um, I'll just take this out of the box and we'll take a look at it and I'll kind of give you an idea compared to a TYT. Um, and uh, in case you're on the fence of which one to get. So this radio is pretty new. And I have played with it a little bit. Okay, and the battery, uh, you know, it's this radio claims to be IP57 waterproof. Not submersible, but resistant to the elements splashing and stuff like that. Uh, light rain or whatever. I have an antenna I'll stick on here for now. Uh, it does come with one antenna, whereas the TYT comes with a, a regular one and an extended one. This one only comes with one. This is not the antenna, that's just one I had laying on my desk. So, in size comparison to a TYT, there's your 390 and there's your D901. Uh, a little bit smaller, I'd say a little bit, a tiny bit thinner, lighter, definitely a little bit lighter. Um, and the keypad is a little, this radio was a little bit, for me to get used to it, the software and the features were just a tad bit different in the software to get it to be able to talk with this one. Um, but if you're familiar with playing with DMR radios and programming them, I'm sure there'll be code plugs available for this one day or someone starting to build one. This radio is pretty new. Um, so looking at the radio itself, of course, the volume, the channel selector, 16 position channel selector, as does the TYT. Uh, your transmit and receive lights up top here, a flashlight on the top. So um, the DMR does not have a flashlight, the TYT. Rather, this one does. Uh, PTT button, and it does have a side button, uh, a monitor button, and a programmable side button. Um, on the right side, your, of course, your speaker mic connector here, same style as every other Ushan and TYT. So there, are, it's it's pretty good that way because you don't have to have ten different programming cables. You know, you, you have at least two that'll work all the radios. Um, so turning it on. Um, it's got a color screen, much like the UV90 does. And what, so let me go into the menu here. Um, into the menu, you have messaging like you do on the TYT version. You have a contacts list, a call log, 
some settings. One thing that this has that the TYT doesn't have is the ability to record conversations. Um, recording, receive, or transmit. That's similar to what an ID51 has. ID51, you can record conversations and save them to an SD card. Now this, I don't know how much memory is in it um, or how long it can record, but there's no SD option on this so far. Uh, if we go into settings, there's a few more set. What I like about this compared to the TYT is you can direct entry a lot of things. Um, for instance, the TYT, you have to pretty much have it programmed on the software. Uh, there is no way of direct entry changing the frequency because both of these will do UHF analog and UHF digital. Now the Ushan version, I can direct entry 447000 for transmit. 44700 for receive, so that would be your simplex, and then a color code, I can change the color code. Or I can set uh, in analog, the analog or digital button. Now I'm in analog, okay? And that is uh, a repeater close by, a fusion repeater, so I can actually do 449725, which is the UHF transmit of that repeater or input, and the output 444725. And then the bandwidth. And the, the tone, receive and transmit CTCSS tones, I can change that right from the front of the radio. The TYT, you cannot. Uh, if there is a way of doing it, my apologies, but I've never been able to program direct into here. Um, so that's one cool thing I like, and to switch from analog to digital on this. Now, the TYT, you have to program separate s zones for analog and digital. So I have uh, in the radio right now, I have, let's see, uh, where would the zones be? Okay, zones. So there's one zone that's programmed in here for the analog channels and one for digital. And you can change zones and do that with the TYT also. So you can make zone analog, zone digital, zone Broward County, zone whatever. Um, this one you can do the same thing as well. So the programming aspects of this are almost the same. Uh, the software is available for this and the drivers on radioddity.com and the, the manual as well. Uh, so I like the, the direct entry feature. One thing I have noticed in the messaging, okay, um, let's go back and make sure, okay, I'm on digital. Now the text messaging, which is a cool feature again, if I make a message on here, first of all, when you're in the messaging, this is one thing that confused me. You see the PY up top? Uh, it actually has that what do you call it? The auto, the the uh, the one thing that um, cell phones first came out with to try to to try to pre-populate what you were trying to text, and it was always uh, a problem. If you hit the pound sign, you, you'll see that change. Py goes to one two. That's your numbers, and then ab, and then capital ab. So you can go lowercase, uppercase, or whatever. Now, if I send a text, let's just do hello. One thing that I have noticed, which may become a little bit of a problem, if I send this to, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna send it to this one. Now, if I read this, it cuts off the first two letters, the first two characters, which is strange. Is that a compatibility between Ushan text messaging and TYT? I don't know. But it is cutting off the first couple of, of letters, um, so keep that in mind. Now, I'm not sure um, when, I, uh, when I text from here to the Ushan, I'm not sure because uh, I don't have the settings. You know, I just have the settings basic to show you right here on, on screen. But uh, when I tried to send a, a message back, I didn't have the group, the group right and stuff, so it was giving me an issue. Um, let's see. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Delete. Yes. Okay. Well, let's go back here and uh, go back to, like I said, contacts. You can, I, I have this as a, a, a uh, just a test here, a single one, um, single call, just for testing on video here. Um, and again, the settings. So it does have a date and time on the radio, whereas the uh, TYT, does have it as well. I forgot. So they both have date and time. I haven't set the date and time on the TYT yet. Um, I haven't played with that. But it does have a date and time, so that's one thing. You can change the tones of the messaging, so it's got different ringtones. So 
So it's got different ringtones uh, for messaging, which may be useful for you if you want to set it differently. Um, the profile, so you can set it to silent or, or uh, you know, regular, in case you're in a busy environment or you're in a library or what, what have you. Uh, different languages, the version, now this does say it is firmware upgradable, but they have not come out with a firmware yet, so I'm guessing, I found a couple bugs on here, I'm guessing they're working on a firmware update for this radio. And, and the TYT, they already have, uh, users in the ham community have already had experimental firmwares on here, I'm guessing that's going to be the case with the Ushan, but it's so new that they don't have firmwares yet, and uh, people may not be working on them. Uh, so, the side key, you can program side key one, two, or three, one, two, three, to do different things. Right now, I have the top side key, low power, low power, high power. Okay, so the top one is for setting the power levels, and then you can do a short press versus a long press and, and such. Um, I haven't turned on the LED yet, but I'm wondering how to do that, and it says LED. That's for the screen. I don't know how to turn the LED on here. Maybe it's not in the firmware yet for the flashlight. Uh, but give you an idea of, uh, let me let me just um, switch here and give you an idea of what it sounds like when I talk into it and what the audio and the speaker sounds like. All right, so this is the audio from my TYT390 to the Ushan D901. It seems to have really clean audio. And uh, for testing purposes, this is all I can do. I don't have any DMR activity around me, or it's too far unless I uh, really have a high antenna. But hopefully soon I have a dongle where I can uh, really go into DMR activity here at the computer because I don't have any repeaters close by. Here is the digital audio from the D901 to the TYT390. I'm a few inches away, about three inches from the microphone hole in the front, and uh, to my understanding from the couple of people I tested it with, it really sounds good. Um, with the IP57 uh, resistance to water, uh, it doesn't really seem to cover up the microphone as some of the other ICOM radios that have the waterproofing really make it hard to hear when you're talking through it. This one seems to be loud and clear. No problems and uh, sounding great. All right, so a basic test, you know, a basic overview of the radio. You're getting more options now with other manufacturers coming into DMR. I haven't been able to use the full potential of DMR, but man, in other countries, it is growing exponentially. I would I would assume that maybe the newer models will be submersible. They may have. Uh, dual band capabilities and I'm sure Ushan is probably going to have a unit soon with GPS in it. We'll let you know. But uh, Other than that, check out radioddity.com. Link is in the description. And um, when I start doing some other tests, I got some tests coming up where I'm going to do all my handhelds at a certain distance and see which one sounds the best at several, several uh, kilometers away. And we'll see. We'll put this one in the test on analog as well. Uh, seven three and subscribe check out Facebook and stay tuned kj4 yzi